Uh, hello everyone. Um, continuing on from uh, the last demo, we've got our model here completed and I'm just going to quickly add in some operational energy templates as well. We've got the embodied carbon but we also want to add in some uh, operational energy. So similar to embodied, we have, we have templates that take into account you know, number of occupants for hot water, uh, um, what kind of hot water system you might want? Is it gas? Is it electric? Um, you know, various different templates for for energy. And I'll uh, yeah, just, just pop these in now. So services equipment, and um, it looks like this one here might be useful. So here we have uh, compliant building, heat pump, electric cooking, CFL. Maybe there's a yeah. A, uh, a single dwelling one that's similar. Let's search for um, BCA, which is sort of code compliant. Residential. Here we go. This looks useful. Um, so, we'll, yeah, we'll add this in. And um, it's just one dwelling. So, we've got our, yeah, heat pump for. For um, heating and cooling, electric cooking, CFL lighting, electric hot water, and refrigeration. Um, should also be some appliances in there, so let's just check if that's in there as well. Uh, let's quickly have a look in here. You can see our carbon figure there is ramped up quite significantly. So here we've got some assumptions for heat pump, electric hot water, refrigeration. Oh, there is some appliances in there as well, so things like your computers, TVs, etc. Uh, so all these other life cycle elements. Now sometimes you will have done some specific modeling yourself, um, you know, uh, uh, thermal modeling and detailed uh, 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 modeling for, for, for that sort of compliance. And you might want to update these figures and plug in your own uh, megajoules and whether it's used uh, um, you know, a gas grid or an electric grid or whatever it might be, and you can just do that by adding operational energy here or even uh, editing it inside the template here. Um, but we have, yeah, we have uh, at the moment these templates, so you can take a little bit more of a uh, rough and ready approach and uh, uh, take that. Uh, I'll just show you in the details tab here the, the floor area and that megajoule demand and, and apply it to a heat pump. So. Um, Get these figures. If you remember when we uh, populated the floor area that needed to be treated here, and we also put in a demand there, so um, average uh, uh, benchmark sort of demand that you see there in the house. Uh, obviously, depends on on your location, and you can you can do your own research behind that. And uh, one other thing that we need to add in now quickly is the uh, water as well. So we have some uh, templates for water. Uh, just go to services, water, and um, we'll go for average in um, Australia with uh, no pool, but probably has a garden. Uh, I think water use tends to be fairly similar across different regions and different countries. Um, Possibly in Australia, you have a bit more water used in the garden, although these days people tend to um, be quite conscious of that and uh, put in uh, plants in their gardens that don't, don't need too much water, hopefully. But, um, yeah, again, you can you can do your own research in this and, and put in your own benchmark figures for, uh, for water consumption and, and water uh, kilolitres per year per year, so maybe update this if you want to. I think I will actually update this uh, this garden figure because it looks uh, uh, significantly large. So it's done 0 0.368 times. There's a calculation in there, but I think I'll just put in something more reasonable, like maybe 100 kilolitres per year. Um, what that calculation was doing was grabbing some of these details uh, in our that we populated in the details tab, but I didn't pay pay much attention to the uh, the garden area. So it's it's assuming that there's a very large garden area to be treated, which wasn't correct. But uh, anyway, we have something sensible in there now. 
So we have our design, and now really what we want to do is start rec uh, recording some recommendations and thinking about things that we can improve on it, on it, and uh, and seeing what effect those have on on the performance, on the carbon performance, or maybe on one of these other environmental indicators. If you're, if you're interested in cost, we can record um, the, the cost impacts as well. Uh, so we go to our recommendations tab, and just like our custom templates, we have. Um, Recommendations. We have a whole list of recommendations that we like to add. Um, you're welcome to add in your own ones if you don't see one on this list and, and start recording that. So maybe I've seen that there's quite a lot of concrete in the uh, in the concrete slab for the floor. So what I want to do is um, have a little search for what we can do about that. And maybe I want to put in a concrete placement, so 50% fly ash blend. I will. Uh, add and record now so the software is now able to take a picture of all the impacts that are going on at the moment and store that inside its, its uh, big brain and and uh, tell me what difference it's going to make when I, when I uh, make this change to the design. Um, so it can take a, a little bit longer uh, than general but it's normally not too bad. So now I want to make my updates. I want to find, um, there's two ways of doing this. I can go into the templates and I can swap out that concrete slab template that was in here and put in a 50% fly ash template of the same area. And uh, here's the template here. Uh, and we have. foundations here where there would be some concrete uh, but what I'm going to do instead and the floor slab there which I would uh, which I would uh, uh, swap out and put in a floor slab uh, the same specs but and uh, the same the same uh, floor area but a um, uh, with, with a fly ash blend which we have a template for and um, so I check the floor area there and then I delete this template out and I could then add in a, uh, the equivalent template but with fly ash it so that's one way of doing it, probably uh, one of the most effective ways of doing it. But there's a shortcut as well, which you can use for things like like this, which is bulk swap. So here we go into bulk swap, and we have a look at all the list of the materials that are currently in the design. Uh, all down here. Carpet, tiles, you know, everything, every single material that's, that's gone into this model. And what I want is uh, it's concrete. So here we have some concrete in here. That that's the concrete that's used in the foundations. Um, and this is the concrete that's used in um, in things like the tile grouts and, and walls and things like that. Um, but what I'll do is stick in uh, just the structure here for for the floor and uh, and change that out for. Um, for a fly ash blend. So what we've got is yeah, concrete reinforced, 1% reinforcement, 30 MPa. So I want to find the equivalent one, um, but with a fly ash mix. So I can also change bulk swap, change things like uh, transport and lifespan and recycling rate. If I've got um, it's loads of timber that's come from a local source, then maybe I want to bulk swap the transport uh, distance. Um, in this case, we want to swap the actual material out. So I go here and I look for concrete. So there's a big list of all our, our uh, and I want to go for this one. So 100% reinforcement, uh, 30 MPa. So it's the same strength, but in this case it's got 50% fly ash. Blend. So fly ash um, is a generally a waste product and uh, uh, is a useful additive to, to concrete instead of. Uh, uh, cement, and we see the effect that that's had on this uh, on this particular element. So for this concrete slab, originally we had um, 8,000 tons of CO2, and we've got that now down to 6,000 tons. Um, so I'm going to apply that change. Uh, so it looks like a like a good idea, <laughs> and <coughs> and I will stop recording.
and here we have the results. So I can uh, save that. And in the recommendations tab here, we'll have a, uh, a saving there. So a saving of 2,496 uh, tons over the lifetime of the building. Maybe I'm more interested in uh, presenting that in terms of the functional units, to get an understanding of, of what we've saved off this uh, uh, building on a per person, sort of per year basis. Um, always kind of in the back of my mind I'm always thinking oh how can we get this to zero uh, tons per person per year or, or less than a ton per person per year is a realistic sort of target to be thinking about so at the moment we've saved uh, 18 kilograms per person per year so that's not bad but um, in the uh, scheme of things uh, we're still looking at 2200 uh, kilograms per person per year so quite a lot of work still to do to make that this building sustainable and what I do is go through all of these recommendations that we have in the template. There's a bit of detail there, a bit of information to show you how to run the template. Um, you will see some different impacts, like for example, for materials changes, you get that saving uh, uh, locked in at the beginning of the design, but it doesn't change over the course of the of the of the life cycle of the building for concrete because it stays there for the whole life cycle. For carpets. You would see an initial saving and then you'd see this saving increase because as the carpets uh, don't get replaced you see, see an increased sort of saving uh, likewise for energy you might see you, um, you ask you you're running PV um, you'll see some initial impacts and this this initial figure will get increased because uh, you have to manufacture the solar PV but then you'll see the energy savings over the life cycle of the building uh, and hopefully that will make up for these initial uh, carbon impacts of, of, the, of the PV. So it's always uh, something that's worth bearing in mind, especially when you're doing uh, projects in different areas with different grids. You're not sure uh, what impact this PV is going to have on, on a project, say, in Brazil, where they have uh, quite a renewable, heavy grid anyway. It might be the case that in, in this project in Brazil, uh, you have these initial impacts and it, the PV electricity generation doesn't make up for for, uh, for those initial embodied impacts of the solar panels. Uh, so yeah, something interesting to bear in mind. We have a big list of, of recommendation uh, library and yeah, normally we would run a good 20 or so, 20 or 30 recommendations on every project to see if we can get these figures down to, to uh, these carbon figures down to uh, that, that, that sort of sustainable target, which is uh, yeah, somewhere between zero and, and one ton per person per year, but certainly a lot less than, than what we're seeing here. Um, so that hopefully gives you a, a, a brief uh, rundown of, of, of the tool and what, what it can do. Um, there's a few things that I didn't talk about where you can add in EPDs. Um, we also have a suite of automated reports that you can, that you can run. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's fairly self-explanatory, so I won't go into that in, in detail. Uh, um, quite a, a extensive way, list of, of reports that we can present the data in, in different ways, and, and uh, yeah, quite a useful thing to have a play around. Um, one resource that I would also recommend anyone who's doing an LCA um, has a look at is on our on our uh, blogs posts in on the website. Uh, we have uh, lots of information that we've picked up and lessons that we've learned uh, over the course of doing the um, LCAs. So um, this one is particularly useful, Sustainable Design Principles 101. Just gives a bit of background on, on some of the things that yeah we've learned, especially towards the multi-res uh, apartment block sort of scenario but some useful lessons in there for whatever type of building um, you're involved with so uh, yeah general breakdown of, of where the impacts are in terms of energy which tends to be a significant factor um, in the overall life cycle and uh, yeah just a yeah, resource there that I'd recommend people check out a bit more detail and recommendations and, and the effect that they have and the kind of ones that you want to be thinking about especially for apartment blocks. 
few and bit of analysis here as well on on different material types and uh, yeah, just a, a useful resource. And um, other thing that I, that we also have is a number of uh, every project we do almost we do a case study on it. And always nice to look at, at at what other people are getting up to and what they're doing. And if you have a see a similar building in your case study and you have a little look on on this project list and you can see. Uh, uh, what other people are getting up to. Um, so, yeah, there's mud brick homes, commercial, etc. This one in particular is one of my favorites. Um, it's the Platinum Modular um, Apartment. So, it received a, a platinum rating, meaning that it's, um, it's very close to being sustainable. I'll just jump into it in my uh, software here as well, but just so you can see, a, get a bit of an idea for what this thing looks like. Um, yeah, sort of prefabricated uh, a box essentially, and um, all sort of timber framed, all very low carbon materials. The the, the builders are really gunning for, for getting as low carbon uh, a building as possible. And um, yeah, we see there it got a 71% reduction against the normal building in terms of um, embodied carbon and 140%. Uh, reduction in terms of operational carbon. That means it had so much renewable energies, of PV, etc., and such a low operational uh, energy requirement that it was uh, uh, producing more than it needed inside the building, and, and, and it was getting credit for for, for, for all this, this net positive sort of impact it was having on, on the uh, on the environment. So yeah, I'd recommend. Having a good read of this one, there's some funky, uh, funky things in there, and, um, uh, and uh, so to have a read of your own core. I'll just jump into the actual model as well, just to show you the nitty gritty of it. So we uh, had our final design here. We ran some recommendations in the improved design, and we actually got them to think more about the functionality of of the building, and they. Um, they put in an extra sort of multifunctional room where it was able to to act as a bedroom and a and a, a living area at the same time, and we gave them credit for that. We gave them half an extra occupant in their in their building because they sort of squeezed out these, this ability to have as many people staying in the house and thereby reducing these uh, embodied impacts on a per person basis. So uh, yeah, really great outcome. As you can see, quite significantly low figures um, here for, our, for our carbon in terms of per person per year, and the actual total is negative. So it's having a positive impact on the environment, which is um, a really good story and a really great project. So um, uh, yeah, that's it from me from uh, this uh, demo sessions. And uh, please feel free to get in touch if you have have any questions or or would, would like to discuss anything that I've talked about uh, further, I'm always happy to, 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 to lend my ear. Okay, uh, thanks very much, everyone. Uh, let's see you soon.